Thanks everyone for uh, joining us today. Um, what we want to go over in the next hour is our Unify Analytics product for Hologic. And this is a pretty cool product that's gonna be helping to leverage business insights to drive improvements. So with that, um, today's two presenters are myself. So I'm the product director for Unify Analytics. My name is Martin Wan and with me as well is Laura Senhueza Miller. She is Hello. our director of customer success. And as for the agenda, really quickly, um, we wanted to provide an overview of Unify Analytics and Hologic Software customer success team. So really go over both the product as well as Laura's team and how that's gonna help all of you customers be able to really drive insights with Unify Analytics. We'll also run through a demo of Unify Analytics so you can see what types of uh, data you're able to view. And then we'll leave about the last five minutes or so for a Q&A. Um, in terms of general housekeeping, before we dive in, feel free to ask any questions at any time in the Q&A function. So if you see here at the very bottom in Zoom, there's the Q&A button. You'll be able to click on that and then just ask your questions and it'll send to all of the panelists. And Laura will be uh, maintaining the chat to see what kind of questions are coming in. Yeah, I'll monitor that, that throughout and then just chime in with uh, throughout the, the demo. Thank you. All right. Okay, so with that, let's get started. Um, we want to talk a little bit about Unify Analytics in terms of what we're trying to accomplish, right? So our goal with Unify Analytics is that we want to be the connector of the breast health continuum across all capital equipment and personnel types. So what does that really mean, right? If we look at what Hologic is trying to do in general, we have a lot of products throughout the whole breast health continuum, and we want to use Unify Analytics as that underlying data platform to link all of that data together for our customers. And why is that, right? What's the benefit? If you look at the bottom, you know, by having the data, understanding from a workflow optimization standpoint, it's gonna allow you to really run an efficient breast center, right? You're also going to be able to manage your staff performance better with actual data that you can see with what's happening. And then the last piece that we're really excited about is how do we help by utilizing that data for our customers to reduce your unplanned equipment downtime, right? So this is gonna be across the whole breast health continuum, but the first step right now is with our screening gantries. And so I'll dive into a little bit of what that means. So in terms of Unify Analytics and what we are leveraging, um, it's around these three items in the middle, right? It's gonna be one, maximizing device efficiency, two, tracking staff performance, and three, this reduced downtime with the predictive expected end of life two failure. So I'll dive into what each of those means. In terms of right now for Unify Analytics, um, around maximizing device efficiency, this is the ability to dive into your gantry to understand what is happening, right? You're gonna be able to look at study volumes broken down by screening, diagnostic, biopsy, you're gonna be able to see, you know, study start times of that gantry, of that specific room. You know, what time did you start your first studies all the way to what time was the last study? So really a level of detail all around that device and room efficiency standpoint. From a tracking staff performance, um, this is broken down into three different areas, right? You're gonna be able to look at efficiency, quality, as well as performance in general. So when we talk about efficiency from a staff performance, you're going to see for your technologists, you know, how many studies are they doing on a daily basis? How is that again broken down by screening, diagnostic, biopsy? So you can just see from an efficiency standpoint what's going on. The other piece around there is you'll be able to track study acquis image acquisition time. So it's just being able to track, you know, from the start of positioning a patient to the end of the last image taken what was that elapsed time? And we'll dive into that from a demo perspective. From a quality standpoint, you're gonna be able to see repeat reject rates as well as the repeat reject rationale. So just really diving into what's going on for that specific tech in terms of what's potentially causing the repeat reject. And then the last piece around performance, this is being able to track paddle utilization as well as compression force. So for paddle utilization, you know, if you buy our smart curve paddle, you'll actually see who is using the smart curve paddle. And so for your techs who aren't, you know, that may be a training opportunity. And then the last piece 
around um, reduced downtime with predictive expected end of life tube failure. So this is something that Whole Logic is really excited about. Um, it's our foray into more proactive monitoring and replacing of component parts. And so specifically on the gantry right now, what we're able to do is predict the end of life of a tube failure. So the analogy I like to give is, you know, when you look at your cell phone, you can look at your cell phone battery and, you know, when it says it's going to be going down to zero, this is the exact same thing from a tube life perspective. We can track when we expect the end of life of a tube is going to be. So with all of these three data points, right, maximizing device efficiency, tracking staff performance, and reducing downtime, you're going to really be able to understand what's happening within uh, your site to be able to optimize the workflow. So I'll pause here and just see if there's um, any questions. There are no questions in the Q&A section, but if anybody does, please do submit it there. And something just to, to add on to what Martin shared here is that with, with these insights that you'll get from Unify Analytics, right, it's, it's tied to the gantry. That's a Hologic solution. So is Unify Analytics. So it's really marrying the two nicely together to give you data that can really help you, as, as he said, optimize performance at your facility. So really excited All about right. it. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. Okay, so let's dive into a little bit of the new features of Unify Analytics 1.2. So we just launched our uh, latest version back in November. And really it's focused on these four key features on the left, right? One is study type breakdown, two is benchmarking, three is paddle utilization, and four is compression force. So some of the items that I've already talked about. In terms of study type breakdown, what that is again, is it's gonna allow you to slice and dice all of your data by screening diagnostic biopsy, right? If you want to, for example, look at repeat reject rates broken down by screening and diagnostic, you can do that. You want to look at your technologist, you know, who's doing screening, who's doing uh, diagnostic type of images, you can take a look and look at that, right? So really being able to slice and dice the data to understand what is going on from a study type. From a benchmarking perspective, this is something also really exciting in terms of what we're able to do, right? So right now, we have brought in the data of over 7,000 plus gantries, of whole logic gantries across the United States and you're going to be able to measure how you, your site stacks up against those 7,000 gantries across key metrics. And I'll dive into that a little bit um, once we go into the demo. But the important part here is now you're going to be able to benchmark versus the rest of your peers. And in future versions, we're looking to figure out how to uh, filter the benchmark. So right now, this is again, just the national average across the country that you'll be able to see. We'd love to be able to uh, filter down in the future, you know, compare, for example, by state. So if you're in the state of Florida, you, you could select, all right, I just wanna look at my peers in Florida, how they're, how I compare to them and so on and so forth, right? So this, this is just an opportunity as we continue to build this out. And there's a Number question three is for you, actually. Oh. Sorry, there's a question for you. Yep. Just regarding data entry point and confirming if that is from the gantry. Yeah, so all the data is coming from the gantry right now. So that is our first foray as part of Unify Analytics. In future versions, we'll roll it out to the other capital equipment um, that Whole Logic has. So, for example, in ultrasound, it would be the supersonics. In the biopsy, it would be the affirm prone, affirm upright, and so on and so forth. So we're going to slowly continue to tack on um, our other capital equipment. Right now, um, specifically for Unify Analytics, it is the gantry. Um, so going back to the paddle utilization, we've talked about this um, before, but you're going to be able to see, you know, for your techs, what type of paddles they're utilizing. So again, there may be a coaching opportunity if, if someone is not using the smart curve and you want to coach them up to use the smart curve, you'll see it in the data. And then the last piece is compression force. So again, you'll see, you know, which of your techs are potentially over compressing or under compressing. And then it gives you an opportunity to look at the data and then have a coaching moment. Now, a couple things to highlight here. The first is that for Unify Analytics, our goal is to provide customers the data, right? We don't want to do anything that's big brother, big sister to say, oh, you know, this tech is doing something wrong. It's ultimately up to you as the admin to be able to discern based off of the data, does it make sense and is it actionable, right? There, there may be a reason. So for example, study volume, maybe one of your techs 
uh, typically is conducting lower amount of studies. But there may be a reason behind that, right? She may be um, always taking on all the toughest patients. So it's, it's going to be very challenging to position the patient and take images. So if you know that, then you, you're you more inclined to understand, okay, it makes sense. The study volume is going to be lower for that tech, right? So our goal, again, is just to provide the data for then you to be able to decide whether it's actionable or not. The other piece that I want to add is that since Unify Analytics is a subscription product, that means that you will always get the latest and greatest features, right? So as we update on an annual basis, the next version of Unify Analytics, you will automatically get that latest version, right? So one thing I do want to highlight in our next version that's uh, launching late this year, um, we're going to have detector prediction, right? So we talked about we have the X-ray tube now and the next version update, we're going to be able to also uh, predict detector failures. So again, as these roll out continually, because it's a subscription product, you will get the latest and greatest. Yeah, and something with that, with customer success, is that as we're your partner throughout your subscription, when it comes to post-sale, we're facilitating that. So we will make sure that you are supported, whether it's just you, other members of your site, you have the, the training needed, you're given advance notice of when the new product or the new version is going to be released so that you can set up appropriately with any you know, training that you wanna do internally for your teams as well. All right. And just to confirm, there was so, a subscription per gantry. And so yes, that is the case today. It is a subscription per gantry. Um, but the beautiful thing is that it's unlimited users. So you can have, you know, multiple um, people at your site that can have a login and access the data as, as you see fit um, per gantry for each of the gantries. Yep. Thanks, Laura. All right. So moving on, before we go into the demo, I wanted to orient everyone with how to navigate Unify Analytics. So as we dive in, think of it as a funnel, right? You always start at your enterprise view and dive uh, further down. So what does that mean, right? At the enterprise view, you know, this is for the admins. If you're managing multiple sites, you're going to see all of your various sites' uh, data all at that enterprise view. And then the site comparisons view, this is going to allow you to see, you know, compare your different sites. So let's say you manage three sites. In the site comparisons, you'll be able to see uh, various data points across your three sites to compare. And then as you move down the funnel, it goes into the specific site. So you can click in and just dive into one individual site. Oops. Hold on. Sorry about that. The, uh, the auto light shut off function, I guess I can't register. You need to um, dance in the room. <laughs> I know, exactly. So I'll have to move around a little bit more. Um, so for the specific site, again, you'll see all of the data that's going on within that individual site. And then within the specific site, you'll be able to dive into the rooms, which is called devices, right? So if you had multiple whole logic gantries, let's say you had three um, gantries at your specific site, you would now be able to look at across those different rooms. And then same thing from a technologist standpoint, you'd be able to compare side by side all of the techs that are at that specific site. Now, one thing to highlight on the very right, there is what I'm calling a hidden view. So you can go into the individual room view as well as an individual personnel view. So I'll dive into that a little bit more as I go into the demo. But what that's going to allow you to do is just track over time the actual performance of either an individual room or an individual tech over time. So with that, um, is there any additional questions before we dive into the demo? Nothing at this time. Um, actually, there's one. Will it be possible only to Hologic Gantry? So Unify Analytics at this time is is only available for Hologic Gantries. All right. So when you dive into Unify Analytics, this is really easy, right? It's a cloud-based platform. So you can sign in from Google Chrome or anywhere um, on a laptop, on a computer, um, on your phone if you wanted to. And what you'll go is here into this sign-in page. So let me sign in. And then once you sign in, you'll click on Unify Analytics. 
So with this right now is what I've just talked about, right? Um, on the left, this is your navigation. So we're starting again, what I've talked about at the top at that enterprise view. And then you see there is the site comparisons view that we talked about, and then the individual sites, right? There's Silicon Valley Clinic, Santa Clara Radiology Center, University and Whole Logic. And then within the individual site that we talked about, you can click in and there'll be the devices as well as the technologists that we talked about. So let me dive into a little bit of this enterprise view. So at the top right here, these six boxes, this is what we're calling as the key performance indicators. From talking to a lot of our customers, they, they wanted to identify, all right, what's the fastest way for me to understand, you know, my enterprise health or my site health? How, how are things stacking up? How are things going, right? And so what we're providing here are those key metrics that our customers are interested in understanding really quickly. So from left to right, um, let's start with the left, the study count tracking current year to date versus last year, year to date. So what this is gonna allow you to do is see, our, what's my study volume right now at year to date versus what it was uh, last year, year to date, just to see how, how you're stacking up versus the previous year. Are, is your study volume increasing? Is it decreasing, right? What, what's going on? The next two boxes, this is around the quality metrics that we talked about, right? So this is your repeat reject rates. So you have your current repeat rate versus the quarter change, as well as the current reject rate versus the quarter change, right? So you're able to see exactly what's happening from a repeat reject rate perspective. And then from there, we have our efficiency metrics. So you have the average studies per day per gantry over the past 30 days, you know, how many studies um, per gantry are being conducted as well as the average studies per day per tech over the last 30 days. So just understanding, you know, how many studies per day uh, on a daily basis is your tech uh, conducting. And then we'll talk a little bit more about this average study acquisition time a little bit lower, but it's here as well. So at the top right here, this is your data, right? In, in this case, this is the summary of these three sites that we have, uh, the data. And then below, this is what we were talking about in terms of the national benchmark average, right? So if you hover over these, these this is pretty nice where you'll have this blue uh, box that calls out what you're seeing, right? So you're seeing the Unified Analytics National Average as of 2020 for over 7,000 plus countries. So you can see really quickly then, you know, how does your enterprise stack up versus the national average? If we look at the repeat rate, right, um, for this enterprise, it's at 0.1 versus 0.38. So it's below the national average, that's great. And then reject rate at 1.89% is below the 2.56%. So again, below the national average, so that's great. And then from an efficiency standpoint, if you look at um, this enterprise, they're doing really well, right? They're, they're averaging about 23 studies per day per gantry versus the national average was 15. And then the average studies per day per tech is over 18 when last year's nas national average was nine, right? So this is a very high performing, high volume um, enterprise um, that's doing re really well, both from a quality standpoint, as well as an efficiency standpoint. And then from there, you can quickly dive into the individual site makeups, right? So you can see, you know, uh, at these three sites, um, there's two whole logic entries at Silicon Valley Clinic, one at the Santa Clara Radiology, and one at University of Whole Logic. And you can see which of the sites makes up most of the studies year to date, right? So Silicon Valley Clinic is making up most of the studies. And then also the breakdown of the current repeat rate and current reject rate, right? So if there was an issue, you can dive into, all right, which of my sites is having that issue? And then same thing from an efficiency standpoint, you can see, you know, average studies per day per dimension, as well as average studies per day per tech. So what I like to tell my customers is, you're always looking for anomalies, right? We are gonna provide a ton of data and I don't want you to have to go in and feel like it's data overload, right? So your goal is really just to look for any anomalies and then based off of identifying that anomaly, you then slowly peel back the onion to see what's going on. So let's, let's take an example, right? If, if for example, this reject rate was at like 6%, right? Well above the national average, then you're going, your you know, alarm is blaring, or what's going on? Why am I at 6%? You can then dive down here to take a look. Okay, within the reject rate, which of my sites is causing that high spike in reject rate? And let's say it was the Silicon Valley Clinic was you know, at 8%. I'm, I'm just throwing out a number. 
Well, now you know to go dive into the Silicon Valley Clinic, go dive into the, your technologist to see what's going on. Right? So really, the goal here is to provide you the data. You look for anomalies. When you identify anomaly, then slowly peel back the onion. Let's continue down. Um, from there, you know, we're still at the enterprise view. You'll be able to see the number of studies uh, on a rolling 12-month basis, right? So the usefulness of this, and hold on, let me just quickly do this. Um, the usefulness of this is that you'll see your studies broken down by screening diagnostic biopsy, right? So you can click through just to see what's going on, what's uh, your study volume consists of. You'll also, based off of these radio buttons here, be able to choose other options. So right now we're on the study type, so you can break it down by screening diagnostic biopsy, but you could also do it by image type, right? Whether you're doing 3D images, combo images, or 2D images to take a look. And then the other way that you can do this is also by total studies. So checking what's your total studies and how does that compare versus the previous year. Um, down here, we have the average study acquisition time for the rolling 12 months. So what this is, is what we were talking about. Um, it's capturing the elapsed time from the start of the first image to the end of the last image. So let's take example of a screening study, right? Your typical four view screening study. What this is tracking is when the compressor motor comes down for the start of the first image to when the compressor motor goes back up after the end of the last fourth image, what has been that total elapsed time in the middle? Right. And so when you look at that, at least for this enterprise, they're very, very steady, right? They're averaging roughly about what, probably like five minutes for screening diagnostic. They're also very steady around six minutes and then biopsy really steady as well around 20 minutes uh, per. So again, this just allows you to quickly see, has there been a spike? If there is, then maybe that's an anomaly. And then for you to be able to go dive in to see what's happening. Repeat reject rates that we talked about. So you'll see, again, it's broken down on a monthly basis. You can see what the reject rate as well as the repeat rate for this uh, enterprise. Again, everything seems to be very steady. You can also, again, what we talked about, since you're going to be able to slice and dice the data, you can look at it by study type, right? You can break down, is it a screening reject, a um, screening repeat, you know, diagnostic reject, even biopsy reject if you wanted to look at it, um, although that's not included in the calculation. So really just providing that extra layer of detail um, for you to just understand what's going on if there was a repeat reject issue. And then last but not least, um, there's also the paddle utilization on this enterprise view. So you can see what type of paddles are being utilized, right? You have your standard paddles, your smart curve paddles, all of your different spot mag stereo. So all the different paddles that you can use on a whole logic gantry, we have it so that you can track it. And the key here that I would highlight is more around the smart curve. So you can see, you know, are, is your site actually using the smart curve paddles or not? If they're not, maybe that's a coaching opportunity. So with that, let me dive into the site compare. Yeah, as you, as you oh, go into yeah. that, just a reminder for, um, for everyone, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them into the Q&A as Martin's going through this, because uh, we're happy to take a pause and, and focus on answering any of those questions that you might have. Thank yep. you. Thanks, Laura. So let's dive into a little bit of the site comparisons, right? This enterprise view, again, was all of the summary that we talked about. Now let's go into the site comparisons. So what this is, is it's gonna allow you to compare your three sites, right? And again, you can slice and dice, whether it's by like total screening, diagnostic, or biopsy. So here, this is looking at the study volume. You can track over time, which of your sites has the highest study volume. And you can break it down even, okay, which sites are typically my highest for screening, which sites are highest for diagnostic, which sites are highest for biopsy, right? So really be able to go through all of that, um, be able to compare your different sites. Uh, the other things are being able to compare the average study acquisition time. So you can compare that by your different sites. Again, breaking it down into screening, diagnostic, and biopsy, repeat rates, and reject rates, right? So really, again, just diving into what's going on at the different sites. So with that now, let's continue to move down the funnel and dive into the Silicon Valley Clinic. So here, you know, we start at the enterprise view, we've gone into the site comparisons view. Now let's take a look at the individual site view. 
So here, um, one thing to highlight is you'll always know where you're at by this blue ribbon at the top that I'm highlighting. So you can see it's showing that it's the Silicon Valley Clinic site view um, that we're at. If you were at the enterprise view, it would specify that it's at the enterprise view right now. So you'll notice um, even at the site view, we provide the key performance indicators for that specific site, um, comparing it to the national benchmark average. And again, the purpose of this is that you're ultimately going to make actionable insights at the site level, not really at an enterprise level. So we still wanted to provide that extra level of detail even at the site level so you can make your adjustments and see what's going on from a performance standpoint um, for that specific site. So you'll, you'll see that it's the same KPIs, but now at the site specific level. You also see just quickly your text, you know, the repeat reject uh, rates and studies completed. So it's a quick look of what's going on for the different texts. And then the other piece that I forgot to actually highlight at the enterprise view, so I'll go back to it, but here you'll see just the gantries and then the tube life, right? So how this is set up, um, if it's gray, like in this example, you know, reach out to Laura, she'll help you fix it so that we can track the x-ray tube life. But when it's green, that means the tube is okay. Once it switches to a yellow color, um, that means that the tube is likely to be at end of life within the next 60 days. And then when this becomes a red color, that means the tube is going to be end of life within the next 30 days. Now, the great thing is that we provide that data here within Unify Analytics, but um, as part of customer success, Laura and her team are actually going to be tracking it in the background as well. So as they see the tube color change from green to yellow, they will actually proactively reach out to you, say, hey, you know, we noticed that the tube is now going, um, you know, likely to be end of life within the next 60 days. Would you like to schedule some time with our uh, service engineers to get it replaced, right? So we are also, as part of your subscription, looking at this and monitoring it from a background perspective. Yeah, and one and thing, let me go back. There. Oh. Sorry, one thing yes, to add there is when it is unavailable and it's gray, there is also proactive action that we take in customer success to support you by engaging that field engineer to understand when the last replacement date was so that we do get the right information in the system for you as, as quickly as possible so that you can look at accurate and, and real-time data. And there, there is a question, Martin. Um, so one of the questions is, I know this will tell the amount of time, per, so this was previously, the amount of time per exam, but will it also tell how many images were acquired per exam? So the actual images acquired per exam, it, we track um, based off of this view. So let me just go back. It, it won't say like, okay, if you had four images or, you know, eight images, um, we, we won't be able to track that, no. It's more just what was the study type and then what was the images associated with it. All right, so this is going to give you that image, but we don't break it down at that individual study perspective. But you will see, you know, whether it was a 3D combo or 2D image that was taken, but not at that individual study. And that's something actually to take in, into consideration. And it's a perfect example, right? We, we have a lot of customers that are loving it and using it. Um, but have ideas, right? There might be an enhancement that you might want to put forward and say, listen, I'd love to see XYZ such as this in a future um, version of Unify Analytics. And that's definitely something that we take back in partnering with you to take back that feedback, share it with our product development team, you know, see, socialize that and, and see where that fits in our, in our vision for the solution. Um, but that, that's great, great feedback already as an example. Yep. Agreed. Okay, so going back to this, um, I'm at the enterprise view again. I just wanted to highlight really quickly this expand button. So even at the enterprise view, you're going to be able to see um, for the different sites, you know, the x-ray tubes, as well as all of the items that are attached to that gantry, right? So, you know, does it have your, the smart curve paddle? Do you have Clarity HD? Is it licensed and so on and so forth? So the ability to see right away within the enterprise view what is attached to the specific gantries. All right, so going back into the site view, I do wanna show one more item before we jump off into some of the technologists. 
So the other thing to highlight here that's really beneficial is this chart, average studies per day. So with this one, you'll, you'll be able to see at the site-specific level, um, what's the average study volume on a daily basis broken down by the day, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, for the specific gantries, right? So you can see, it seems like Mondays are the busiest days here at, at this specific site. They're, they're averaging about, you know, 27, 28 studies. Um, there's a little bit of a lull after that, um, Tuesday through Friday. And then it does look like they are open on Saturdays as well, right, in, in this demo. So you'll be able to see exactly what's going on. And then if you think of these as individual rooms, maybe you'll see, all right, is one room heavily utilized um, compared to another? And then based off of that data, you can start diving into why is that the case, right? Is it because one room is closest to the changing room, so everyone wants to use it? Or is it because one gantry is the, the latest gantry installed and everyone wants to use you know, the latest and greatest. So it's just a way for you to, based off of this data, be able to discern that type of information. And then the rest of the views, um, we try to make it as easy as possible compared to the enterprise view. So that way you can orient yourself. So a lot of this data is just repeat um, of what you would have seen at the enterprise view, but it's just site specific in terms of the, the data. So with that, let me dive into the technologists page. So now within Silicon Valley Clinic, I'm going to dive into the technologists. Um, for this specific area, this is what we talked about in terms of being able to just see what's going on across your different techs, right? And it's across the three metrics that I talked about, efficiency, quality, and performance. So you'll start off at the top. This is going to be all of your different efficiency metrics. You can see all of your different techs. You know, what's the number of studies that they've done over the past 30 days? You can break it down again by screening diagnostic biopsy, right? So you can see which of your techs are doing what. And what was the site average? And so you can see here, at least over the past 30 days, it looks like tech SKH has done the most uh, total studies. And then you can also break it down, though, by average studies per day uh, for the last 30 days. So once you look at that, even though SKH looked like she had done the most studies uh, from an average study per day. It seems um, most of the texts across the board are the same. And just something to mention there, um, with all of this data that you're seeing, it, it is live data, right, from your site being pulled um, from the gantry. And, and Unify Analytics is web-based. So the beautiful thing is, I mean, I access it from my laptop, so does Martin. We have the ability to access it very easily from our browser. We save it as, as our um, kind of a favorite. And then uh, when you do get the subscription, you get your login information and you can just go ahead and play and start and start diving into the data. So all of this, um, there was a question about this, Martin, so I just took the opportunity to, to kind of fit it in here. Um, but it is real time, it, it's live and it's, uh, it's easy to access. Yep. Thank you. All right, so we'll continue average studies per day, right? We've talked about that. Again, you can break it down by screening diagnostic biopsy. You can also look at the percentage of study breakdown, so you can see which of your techs are just your, you know, doing 100% screening versus other techs who may be doing diagnostics or biopsy. So again, being able to see that um, data. And then the average study acquisition time. Right, so you can break it down by screening diagnostic biopsy to see what's that average study acquisition time for the individual techs uh, compared to the site average. Right, for the most part here, for this specific site, it seems like everyone is uh, pretty on par, so there's no real major anomaly, which, which is great. Repeat rates, so we've talked about this before, again, breaking it down um, by, by different study types as well. And then also the repeat image reason rationale. So I'll dive into the reject because it's uh, easier to talk about. So as you scroll down, you know, again, we're talking about now more of the quality metrics, right, with the repeat reject rates. Here with the reject rate, you're going to see what's that percentage. For the most part, it's, it's even across all of the text, which is great. And you can dive into it again by screening, diagnostic, or biopsy. From a rationale standpoint, now you can see what's, what's going on, right? What is the reason why there's a reject image? So if we take this SKH as an example, you can hover over and you'll see, all right, four were 
Over the last 30 days were due to artifacts. 12 were due to an x-ray equipment failure, right? 10 were due to patient motion. Um, two were due to detector underexposure. And then 21 due to position, right? So you can identify and see what is the issue, what's causing that rejected image, um, what's that rationale, right? The other thing we do provide here um, with this red line is the overlay of what that reject rate is. So what I want to caution, again, a lot of our customers is, you know, you may have one tech who's your super high volume, but if they're, and so it may look like they have a lot of reject rationale, but that's because they're taking a lot of images, right? Ultimately, if their reject rate is at whatever threshold you'd like, you know, let's say, you know, you, your target is 3% for, for all of your techs. Well, if that tech is still under 3%, then there may not be anything to worry about, right? So just something, again, to keep in mind that we're providing the data, but we're not saying, you know, this is bad or this is good. Um, going down from a percent paddle utilization. So again, you can see what types of paddles are being utilized by each of the different techs. Um, so the example we continue to have is, you know, who's using the smart curve, who's not, right? So here it seems like no one is using the smart curve. So then maybe that's an opportunity if you have the smart curve paddle, you know, do you need to bring in someone to help with the positioning and training on that aspect? Other pieces is the average compression force over the last 30 days. So you can see among your different techs who may be over or under compressing, and it's broken down by the CC and MLO views. Right? So again, you can just see what's happening across the different techs. Now, what I want to dive into next is the hidden view that I was talking about. So this gives you a good overview of what's happening for all your different technologists across efficiency, quality, performance metrics. But ultimately, again, if you're going to make some type of coaching, you want to see what's happening at that individual tech level, right? So as you see right now, um, you know, my mouse is a pointer. And then when it becomes this little hand button, that means you can click into it and it takes you into what I was calling that hidden view, right? So let's take a look at SKH. So you, all you have to do is you just click on it, right? And it takes you to this individual tech performance analysis, right? So we're looking at SKH now and what she has been doing. So you'll see right off the bat the study time. What this is is tracking over the past 30 days, you know, when was the study start time and end time for that individual tech broken down again by screening diagnostic biopsy, right? So you can see what, what type of uh, studies that she's been conducting. Typically, it seems like for this tech, you know, she starts around 8 a.m. and it's ending by around 5 p.m. And you'll see little gaps in the middle that look like lunch breaks roughly around, you know, 12 to 1, right? So you're, you're able to see what is going on uh, from a daily basis over the last 30 days, again, broken down by screening diagnostic biopsy. But also, you can break it down by image type as well, right? So whether it's a 3D combo, 2D or CEDM, you can see what type of images are being taken. From there, we also provide just the weekly number of studies completed. So it's broken down by number of screenings completed on a weekly basis, diagnostics, biopsies, um, and what was the site average, right? So you can see how many studies were being completed, what's the site average, um, just to check on a weekly basis what's going on for that tech compared to the site average. Other items that you're going to be able to track over time um, is, for example, the study volume. So you can see what's the study volume compared to the site average. And again, this is going to be broken down by screening diagnostic biopsy. So you can see for the individual tech, you know, what has she been doing um, compared to the site average on a rolling 12-month basis. So, um, you know, for this specific example, it looks like this is the high volume tech. She does a lot of the studies um, compared to the site. Um, you can also see, you know, what's that study type breakdown for the individual tech over time. So on average, over at least the past three months, about 85% of the studies that she's conducting are screening, and then the rest are diagnostic. So this is, again, you know, maybe you had one tech who was doing 100% screening and you wanted to start training her on doing diagnostics. Well, now when you come in, you'll be able to track over time. All right, has the training helped where now she's actually taking on 
uh, more diagnostic imaging, right? And you, you'll be able to see that. Or, you know, if she was doing biopsies, affirm uprights, um, you'll be able to see that as well. Average study acquisition time. So we've talked about this. Again, you can compare um, the tech versus the site average to see what's going on. You know, so if, for example, there was a spike in the average study acquisition time, or maybe for a new tech, you've noticed that it takes her a lot longer. Well, hopefully it's a coaching moment. And then you would track over time to see, okay, has she come down in terms of her average image study acquisition time? We have the repeat rates that we've talked about. Reject rates, again, you can break it down by screening diagnostic biopsies, so really that extra layer of detail. Um, the number of repeat images by reason over the last 30 days, as well as the number of reject uh, images by reason over the last 30 days. So again, just seeing, all right, what was the cause? 21 due to positioning, uh, 10 due to motion, right? So really just be able to see what's, what's happening. And actually on that one, with position, um, you know, with, with, with my team, with the customer success team, really being in the know with your facility and what we're looking at, the insights, if we do see position kind of stand out, and even yourself, if you were to see that be an anomaly, right? We wanna, we wanna support you. So we actually have a partnership with our applications team, obviously in Hologic, um, and have engaged them in cases where position has been uh, something that stands out and we wanna proactively support the techs at that facility. And so we have, you know, free videos that, that have credit, um, uh, see credit, and you, we can actually move you to the right direction to support your, your techs when it comes to position. So I just want to call that out as well with a partnership we have internally. Yep. Thanks, Laura. From there, we also have this really neat table, which is tracking all the reject reason details. It's broken down by the left and right breast laterality, as well as the view image taken. And what was the total reject count on a rolling 12 month basis? For this one, what I like to tell customers is you're looking for patterns, right? What's typically causing the most trouble for that specific tech? So if you look here, you know, the leading causes are, it looks like is the left and right MLO in terms of the total rejects. Well, then maybe this is an opportunity for a coaching moment, right? Like to Laura's point, if, if we noticed that there was a lot of positioning issues from a rationale perspective, well, is this an opportunity to help coach from a positioning standpoint? So that way you could try to reduce those total rejects, right? So again, we just want to provide you all of this layer of data for then you to be able to drive um, insights. Some of the other items you've already seen, the percent paddle utilization. We've talked about this. And then you can also see the compression force, right? What's the average compression force uh, for the tech compared to the site average, just to be able to see what's going on, right? So again, um, you know, a pause here. I, I do want to highlight this is a ton of data that we're providing. So I don't think, you know, anyone wants to be scrolling through all of this. So again, the goal is to identify anomalies. And then once you've identified an, an anomaly to peel back the onion, to go look for what is that issue. I provided um, a rundown more from the technologist side, but you would have the same type of data from a device perspective. So for, for the individual device, um, you would have this, this type of data as well. Uh, but in the interest of time, I, I, I will only show the technologist side. So Next with that- question, Sorry, a question came up about, uh, we're able to see the uprate information for the Affirm uprate when it comes to biopsy metrics. And at this time, um, you know, I was just commenting uh, to a question on the side around the affirm prone table. So maybe you could just shed more light and insight on that specific area. Correct. So anything attached to the gantry right now, so our affirm upright, um, we can chat, we can track. For the affirm prone, that is the future that we talked about where as we continue to map out all of the different data inputs into the breast health continuum, we're going to bring in that data in the future, right? So the goal is for our customers uh, in the future, you're going to be able to see the data that's coming from all of Hologic's capital equipment, from our gantries to our ultrasounds, to our firms, to our Brevera that we have uh, relaunched, right? Even our DEXAs in the future. So really mapping out all of those different capital equipment, be able to predict when certain components are going to be at end of life so that you can replace it to reduce that unplanned downtime. Like this, this is really exciting stuff in terms of where we want to take it. Right now, this is just the start of what we're trying to accomplish. 
Thank you. And then one other question, uh, now that we're just talking about data, um, is around data upload, is it automatic to the cloud? And one of the answers what, that, that was shared here was that it's dependent on the customer rebooting their gantry, right? And in most cases that is on a daily basis. So it would be sharing out um, the data from the previous day, but it would depend on, on each site. And so if you have anything additional to add to that as well. Yep, exactly. So we get the data every time the gantry is rebooted, um, that, that previous day's data is uploaded to the cloud. I know typically we do request all of our customers to be rebooting their gantry on a daily basis. So we'll, we'll be able to receive all that data. If for some reason, you know, you forgot to reboot the gantry or whatnot, again, that's where the customer success team with Laura, she's tracking in the background to see are we receiving the data or not. And if we're not, she will proactively reach out to say, hey, you know, looks like we're not receiving the data. You may need to reboot your gantry. So again, this is something that we're monitoring in the background as well. All right, so can everyone see my screen? I'm back in the uh, presentation. Yes. Okay. Let's go through. All right, so we've already talked about this a little bit um, based off of the question, but you know, where we're at today, again, we can measure the gantry, right? We, we're measuring the workflow efficiency, technologist quality, the predictive end of life tube. And then the future integrations are integrating our other software solutions that I'll touch upon in a bit in terms of our Unify Equip software, our Quantra, and then across the board, all of our other capital equipment, right? So our goal is again, to map out that whole breast health continuum, be able to help our customers really understand what's going on from a device utilization as well as personnel performance standpoint. And then the last piece is really that proactive monitoring and maintenance of Hologic's capital equipment, right? So our goal there is how do we help you make sure that there's reduced unplanned downtime if we can predict when a component is likely to be at end of life failure. And so with that, I do want to highlight, um, you know, our Unify Enterprise software. So Unify Analytics is part of our Unify Enterprise suite of software solutions that is helping to address a lot of the uh, workflow challenges, right? So analytics is one piece to really optimize workflow efficiency. We do have our award-winning Unify Equip platform, which will help you out with all of your Equip uh, MQSA audit needs. So what I like to call the analogy is that it's the turbo tax of Equip. All you have to do is just, you know, make sure that people are going in to, to either look at images or to train on items. And then our Unify Equip solution takes care of the rest, right? It knows how to pull images. It'll tell your radiologist, um, hey, you know, you need to review images. And then once they've reviewed images, it tells your technologist, hey, it's time for you to review the images that the radiologists have reviewed. And then at the end of the day, you'll actually be able to just click a button, print out a report, and this is a report that you can hand off to the auditor um, so that they can just make, show um, that you're, you're up to date on Equip. And then Quantra is really simple. We've, we've had it for a while. It's, it's our breast density software. So now I'll turn it over. Um, Laura's already talked a little bit about the customer success team, but you know, she'll dive into um, some additional items in terms of what to expect and what's exciting about the customer success team. Yeah, thank you. And really with the last slide that you just saw with those three solutions, you know, Unify Analytics, Equip, and Quantra, these are subscription solutions. And we, we're excited to start with these and continue to grow our offerings uh, for our other software solutions as well to, to offer them as a subscription. So when we're talking about customer success, you know, these are the three products that are within scope. And so we're committed to our subscription customers, making sure that post-sale you receive the right training, you know how to navigate. Any of your questions are answered immediately because we, we know the, the importance of the data and how it can help you optimize at, at your facility. And so that's kind of our initial objective. And, and it carries through throughout the whole journey post-sale is really putting you at, as our priority. Our customers, you know, we're, we're relying on you to be successful. That's our success, your success is ours. So we continue that throughout the journey um, so in the first 30 days, like I said, we onboard you and then that's really a 60 minute training. Um, it could be longer if, if you like, and if you desire more check-ins after the fact, we can absolutely accommodate that. Um, but we found that 60 minutes is a good start to go through your specific data, 
make sure that you're comfortable and confident in navigating um, Unify Analytics. And then thereafter, it, it really could be monthly, it could be quarterly, it depends again on your unique needs in using Unify Analytics and what your priorities are, whether it's tech performance, the tube and future detector status, um, and, and all of the other metrics as well, repeat reject rates. So we understand what your priorities are and we can engage with you as, as it suits best for you, for your success. So we'll track with you, you know, quarterly business reviews, we'll take a look at your scorecard, right? What are the goals that you wanted to set at the beginning? You know, did you want to hit a certain percentage for your reject, reject, uh, re reject repeat rates and be below that? Well, how are we tracking, right? What can we do in customer success to help you achieve that, that improvement? Um, so those are the things we'll be tracking on, on a regular basis with you in summary. So that's kind of a snapshot of, of, uh, of kind of the partnership that we would have with you as a customer for these subscription solutions. Thanks, Martin. Yep, and I do want to highlight again, this customer success team that Laura is leading, this is included as part of your subscription, right? So there's no added cost to this and you can feel free to reach out to her and her team anytime, right? So we've had customers where if they forgot, all right, I, I forgot, you know, where do I find something within Unify Analytics? You can directly reach out and Laura and her team will be able to help, right? So again, our goal is that we want to be with you um, on your journey in our subscription products. And so we're gonna be there every step along the way, right? Don't, don't feel that, oh, you know, you can't reach out to her, they're, they're very approachable. That is the goal of the customer success team is to ensure your success in terms of whatever you want out of our subscription products. Any, so any questions or comments here? I don't see any questions in the Q&A. If anybody has any, don't hesitate to, to plug it in there. What kind of heads up do you need prior to scheduling a UA demo for a customer? Okay, well, that's actually a good segue into this, uh, this last piece. Um, so if you're interested in seeing a demo with your own data, um, and you know we can dive into some of the key insights, feel free to reach out to us, right? So reach out to your account executive, reach out to your women's health specialist, or you have Laura, my email here as well. Um, so we're happy to just work with you, find the right time, and we'll be able to run you through a demo, right? And be able to show you based off of your data, hey, here's, here's what's going on from a repeat reject rate. Here's what's going on from an efficiency standpoint, and be able to just walk through all that and how Unified Analytics could be beneficial for your site as, as you manage it. And I think uh, that's it for questions on this side, unless anything else comes up. But a lot of um, a lot of thank yous for the presentation. So Martin, thank you for that demo and walking through uh, Unify Analytics with us. All right. Well, if there's no additional questions, that was all that we had. I'm hoping that you know this gave you a good idea in terms of what. Hope oh, sorry. Was there a question? Final question. <laughs> Actually, a question around data privacy. Is there something specific about data privacy? I think it's just, uh, you know, being that it's web-based, uh, the, the confidence that we have in it staying and being private to that specific site. Yep, so we have all that. Um, we've run it through, um, like, what we were called hackers. So we made sure that it, it is private and we have the form to show that, um, you know, it's, it's very secure. And then the other thing to highlight is since we're not, showing any patient data. So there, there's no PHI um, issues as well. Thank you. All right, anything else? Okay, so with that then, um, I'm hoping that everyone got a good glimpse in terms of Unify Analytics, what we have to offer and where we're trying to take this product. Right? And again, I, I wanna just stress that as part of the subscri subscription, you will always get the latest and greatest. So as new features come out, you know, if you're a customer, you say, hey, I'd love to see this or that, and we build it in um, based off of your feedback, you're gonna have that latest and greatest, right? So our goal is to just continue to work with our customers, uh, keep adding new features that, that folks are interested in. So for example, this next version that's coming out is detectors that, that I've talked about. 
as well as being able to create printable reports, right? So this is all based off of feedback um, from our existing customers. And we just want to continue to keep this ball rolling until we map out the whole breast health continuum and really provide that value for our customers so that they can just optimize their workflow. Oh, one more question, Martin, since we're still on. Oh. We yeah. may, if we uh, you know, have two minutes left, let's see. Go ahead, Dana. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is this presentation available to share? So I believe this presentation is recorded and will be sent out, yes. I believe so. If you'd like to see, yeah, and if you'd like to see more of specific data to your facility, we can absolutely do that um, separately where, where, you know, Martin, myself, and obviously the account executive and women's health specialist, um, we can facilitate that and make sure that we're pulling your data, your site's data specifically into the, the demo. All right. Yep. Okay, I think that's it then. Now we can wrap up. <laughs> Excellent. So yes, okay. um, yeah, Dana. Let's uh, let's make sure that we can connect with you and and support the next steps in in a demo. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.